John here guys and today we're talking about the full build up and review of the Arma 10 Tadpole. Ready? Mm -hmm. When you were a tadpole and I was a fish. This thing has come together quite, quite well. I'm really enjoying everything about this build. I am uh, using, let's go ahead and go through the components list. I'm using the Nameless um, 12 amp all-in-one Whoop board with the included adapter. One small note about that Nameless all-in-one board is that on the video side, it's got like video in, video out, five volt ground, but it only has one set. And so I'm not providing my five volt power through my video transmitter. The Nameless doesn't have a five volt output. I don't like to do that on some of those inexpensive video transmitters anyway. I'd rather power it from the flight controller and they don't have a dedicated set for that. So you can either use one across the board or you can do like I did and do both power and ground um, for your camera and video transmitter to the same pad, but it is a little bit tight. Those pads are very small and they're like right next to each other. So you gotta be careful if you're gonna do that. On there, I am using um, the nameless uh, video transmitter in there. I believe it's 25 to 400 milliwatts. So very powerful, very small. I'm using the XM Plus receiver, the Runcam Nano 2 camera motors. I'm using the Zing, iFlight Zing 1105 6000 KV. Look at the color scheme on there. A lot of that, you know, turquoise, pink, purple, orange. Uh, looks absolutely beautiful. Props, I am using the um, HQ 2.5 by 2.5 a uh, three blade on there purple goes perfectly with this motors and i'm using just the regular dipole antenna for the video and i just have my um receiver antennas going out the back i'll probably mount those in a more permanent fashion pretty soon but i wanted to get this thing up in the air and it flies so so good um i was wondering when this thing came out and i saw that it was 65 millimeter um, more of a toothpick class was that a little bit late to the toothpick party because a lot of those toothpick guys are now on to three inch, very, very light three inch, but three inch. And uh, then the other thing was with the adapter, some of the other components I've used, it's coming at about 71 grams. So toothpick wise, it's a little on the heavier side. Most of the toothpicks um, that I have either seen or built are between 50 and 60 grams. But if you take into account, Okay, so it's roughly 20% heavier. You know what else is 20% heavier? All of my freestyle five inch builds compared to my racing builds. So all the toothpicks that we fly typically are very bare bones. They're very thin armed. Um, they're built for speed. The battery goes on the underside uh, and you get a lot of lightweight, very fun performance on those. I've showed you those in tracks on videos on this channel. But what they don't have is the ability to top mount. They don't have superior camera and component protection like this frame provides. And uh, those things together really give you, whereas things like the Diatone Cube give you a five inch racing feel down in a very small package, this gives you the full freestyle experience. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, when you top mount a battery, it has a little bit of extra weight, but a lot of power down low. That is why I went for larger motors on this thing, 1105. I did not go for the 1103s. I wanted power, and this thing has so much power. When I arm it, it already starts jumping off of the ground. That's how much power these motors have, because I basically made this a very tiny version of my Armatan Marmot with the space grade carbon. Uh, that is my, uh, to date, probably my favorite freestyle build that I've ever made or flown. And so I did kind of the same recipe here. I sacrificed a little bit of weight by going with super powerful motors. And the result is when you fly this thing around, um, golly, the, the, it has that little bit of extra weight allows you that momentum when you're doing some of those um, freestyle maneuvers. It feels so good, so locked in. Um, what a home run with this package, Chris. I would really, really, 
really like to see one um, that is maybe just a tad longer to be able to fit a three inch prop on there. I'd love to make a three inch version of this. I'd probably use the exact same component recipe. Um, maybe I might go up to an 1106 or 1107 or 1108 motor, who knows? But, um, but as it sits, this definitely has a place. Look how small it is compared to um, like the Emacs Easy Pilot thing. Um, it's just so small, so light. Um, you know, 71 grams seems, it sounds like a lot more than like 55 grams. But when you're holding it in the palm of your hand, it really doesn't feel heavy at all. And being that you can use those very small 3S packs with this, you get a lot of power, a decent amount of flight time. And uh, depending on how you fly it, like I was typically getting about two, two and a half minutes, um, pushing it, doing lots of power loops and stuff like that. If you're just cruising around with an occasional punch, probably push this to like three and a half, maybe four minutes, uh, which is totally acceptable. Um, there is plenty of room. A lot of people are running these with, uh, maybe I'll swap in the Runcam Nano 3 um, camera split thing. I'm not sure. Uh, I think I could fit it though. Uh, what do you guys think? It would definitely be tight. Um, so if you haven't built up a premium Armitan Tadpole yet, go ahead and get on that. Where else can you have an Armitan quality frame for $35? If you've been kind of on the sidelines watching the premium Armitan train just zoom right past you, now is your chance to be able to get that high quality feel. But just a warning, uh, as soon as you get this one, you may be tempted to go down that rabbit hole and just buy up a ton of Armitan friends because they really are that good. Thanks guys.